This is an IBM ThinkPad 820. It's one of the only ThinkPads in a lineup of Power Series computers which use the PowerPC architecture. These laptops don't contain a regular Intel x86 CPU and instead use a PowerPC CPU. This laptop was released in 1995, sports a PowerPC 603E processor running at 100 MHz. It has a 48 MB of RAM and a 1.2 GB SCSI hard drive. The screen has a resolution of 800 by 600 pixels. Around the front of the device we have a battery here, a CD drive, headphone jack, microphone jack, volume control, Around the device we find the power switch, two PCMCAA or Cardbus 16-bit slots, a PS2 connector for a mouse. On the back of the machine we have, starting from the left, a Kensington lock, a SCSI port, a floppy drive port, a parallel port, a serial port and a VGA connector. On the right side there is a 4-pin power connector running at 20 volts. Um, it's also nicely labeled with the pinout. Under this cover there is room for an external video capture unit. ThinkPads 860 and up were supplied with a uh, composite video input and output um, capability and could even be used for video conferencing with AIX. The keyboard layout on this particular model is a German uh, Quartz layout. Um, this ThinkPad does not come with a um, touchpad, but uh, the rather the old track point um, mechanism. Up here we have uh, some status LEDs and the screen brightness and contrast can be adjusted with these slider switches. Maintenance is also a really easy task with these two slider switches at the front allowing for easy access by lifting the keyboard cover up and uh, as well as the palm rest allowing instant access to the battery, the CD drive as well as the hard drive. CD and hard drive can be lifted up with these mechanisms. Just pull the lever up and pull on it. It comes out. So, by the way there's our SCSI uh, jumpers. We put it back in, press firmly down and just uh, snap the device back in place. Pull the lever back in. Uh, the battery can also just be lifted out of the machine and the cover comes back down and snaps firmly. The screen cover is held on by two of these slider switches on both sides. And the ThinkPad can then just be opened like that. Power is supplied through a 4-pin connector and uh, this AC adapter can accept a wide input voltages. On the top uh, is a standard IEC C13 jack instead of the C5 jack often used today. The floppy drive is external and can be connected to a port on the back of the computer. It uses a 17mm connector which was also used uh, in the regular x86 ThinkPads of the time. To get network connectivity, IBM sold its Ethernet 2 credit card adapter. It has this proprietary connector and is a regular 16-bit card bus card. This cable can be used to connect the card to a regular RG45 network jack. And the card can then just be slotted into the machine. Hitting the F1 key at startup opens up the Easy Setup menu. This menu allows you to configure the SCSI controller as well as the SCSI IDs, the controller ID and the hard drive ID. 
you can set a boot up password as well as change the boot order. Currently set to the floppy drive as well as the hard drive ID. You can run diagnostic functions. And there is also a hidden command line. Eat a bug can be typed into the easy setup menu to open up a shell. Regular commands like dir as well help can be typed in and um, this shell can be used for multiple functions. For example, there is a monitor, a disassembler uh, built into this shell. Uh, be very careful with fdisk and vdisk commands. These are not uh, partitioning tools, but rather just format the disk immediately without any confirmation. So don't run these commands if you want to keep any data on the machine. Multiple operating systems are available, including IBM's own AIX, OS2, NetBSD and Windows NT 4.0. Windows NT 3.51 was also supported, but I couldn't get it running on this machine because I'm missing the required driver floppies. We've also worked on uh, installing Linux on this machine. After a couple of days of work, we were able to install a Debian Linux 3.0. That's the uh, code name Woody release with a uh, 2.4 Linux kernel. Unfortunately, the video card isn't working properly. We only get a garbled frame buffer and uh, so all work has to be done through the uh, serial port. Uh, PCMCA, Ethernet, uh, SCSI and uh, partially the sound are working and can be used and uh, more information on that can be found in the video description. We've uploaded our work uh, on Linux to GitHub. External SCSI CD drives can be used with the ThinkPad H20 but they need to support a special 512 byte sector mode. Um, this ThinkPad is based on a PowerPC reference platform, in short PREP, which requires an MBR partition table on every bootable medium, even on CDs and floppy disks. Uh, the partition containing the boot code needs to be set to the type uh, hex41 uh, and it needs to be marked as bootable. When you are building a Linux kernel uh, for PowerPC, it uh, will generate a zimage.prep file, which can directly be written to a floppy disk or a hard drive partition um, with the appropriate type, and uh, then the laptop can be booted from that. When, but in order to boot Windows, you need a special boot floppy. Uh, this floppy is called ARC, and the latest available version is uh, 1.51. The ARC floppy disk is using the language set in the system settings, um, which is the reason that the uh, menus are uh, localized in uh, German. But uh, we are just going to execute the Windows NT setup.
You can see the machine type and RAM in the About dialog. Windows NT for PowerPC is just a regular version of Windows NT with all regular uh, accessories and tools like Microsoft Paint. Internet Explorer is also installed in uh, the very recent version 2.0. One special feature of Windows NT 4.0 for the PowerPC architecture is that it comes with a 16-bit emulation layer. The NT uh, VDM can emulate x86 code uh, well, 16-bit x86 code on a PowerPC CPU and uh, we are doing just that here, running a normal MS-DOS Quick Basic and um, we are running the example uh, gorilla.bus um, demo code. In the Disk Administration menu, the PowerPC Prep Boot Partition as well as the Arc Partition can be seen. As the system has no soft power feature, we have to turn the power off manually. At the end of this video, thanks to Thesis for making this video possible. He helped me get this laptop up and running, tried a lot of different configurations for the operating systems and made running a Linux on this device possible. Many complex cross-compilation tool chains were built in order to compile Linux kernels for this machine. Many kernel command lines have to, had to be tried uh, in order to get the system to properly boot and uh, some tweaking was necessary to get PCMCA working. Archive.org and their Wayback Machine were also essential tools in getting this laptop up and running. Uh, many software and drivers could only be found in their archives, for example the Windows NT build used here. 
further details and links can be found in the video description. Thanks for watching.